That is a Hulk number one. What's up guys, James with Mint Hunter Comics here and I just got a lead on a Mega Grail. I'm gonna go pick it up. Hopefully while I'm there, I'm gonna be able to pick up maybe more books than just the one. I guess we'll just have to see. Some of you might know what it is already. I did mention it in a previous video. You'll just have to see. All right, I just got here. Oh man, I am nervous. I want this book so bad. There, there's good stuff here. Good early Iron Man, Ghost Rider. I did, all the stuff that was there was all like, it was, and I have a friend, believe it or not, who likes Black Hawk, yes. You Nobody know. likes Black Hawk. You you, Black, wait, we might have to talk because I have a bunch of Blackwood that Black Hawk that I can't get rid of. <laughs> I'm asking, well, are, are they are they the pen centers? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've well, I've got so much of that, man. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a lot of untapped potential. I some this is a little better, but like old war books, I've got a lot of that, man. A lot of ten cent war books. I think I think <laughs> sci-fi stuff. Then you get your like Archie's early stuff. Some but of that early Archie you gotta watch out for because it could be pretty expensive or it can be worth pennies. I know. Listen. You want to find a, you want to find books hard to find high grade. Try to find early Archies. Oh yeah, Pe anything so Pep. Cheap. What's it? Pep twenty two. That's a disaster yeah. to find. That is a Hulk number one. I get a, I get a taste of the any income you make from in that video. <laughs> wow, I'll be reading that later, man. That could be the smallest but nicest collection as a whole I've ever picked up. I am now a proud owner of an Incredible Hulk one, and there were plenty of other awesome books in there. So let's get them home and take a look. Oh man, hours, and I mean hours later, I finally got everything into bag and boards. Uh, let's go ahead and show you what we got. I think you can honestly already see there's some pretty big stuff here. Right, Peach? She's indisposed. Let's check it out. All right, guys, you saw it. I went there with the intention of buying an Incredible Hulk. Number one, I don't even care that it's missing the cover. It's still hyper valuable. And actually, to be honest, it pretty much pays for this collection. I wanted just that book and I ended up buying about two short boxes more. I have since put almost everything into Mylar's. Everything has been priced, so I'm good to go. And I can say that I am ecstatic about this pickup. This collection literally feels like just a box of nothing but just wall books for conventions. This box has so many very desirable Silver Age books that it's frankly ridiculous. The most amount of good books for the smallest amount of books I've ever bought. Let's not waste any more time, man. Which box do I start with? I think I'm gonna start with this one. Hulk! Smash! We've got, owned for the first time, Steranko's Incredible Hulk number one, annual, iconic book, absolutely gorgeous. Also, for the majority, everything in here was on the higher end of mid-grade. VG plus to like fine, um, even a few things in here, very fine, which is, you know, awesome. A lot of this stuff, you usually find it in low grade. Uh, we've got Hulk issue 110, nice silver age, 114. 113. 111's a nice one, especially in this Mylar. First appearance of the Galaxy Master. Hulk 112. I'm going to take all that down. 108. Really like the cover of that. <clears throat> I like these early Mandarin covers. I also like the one where he fights Iron Man. I'll show you later. Uh, 106, 
Death of the Missing Link. Uh, 105 was in here. Uh, very nice. Um, I can't remember. The, there's some sort of key significance for this book, and it is just completely escaping me. I know that that's a very desirable of the early Hulks. Um, Hulk 103, first appearance of the Space Parasite. And here it is, 102, the return to the run after, what was it, Tales to Astonish? I think it was Tales to Astonish. Um, this is when the run came back and was retitled under Hulk. Uh, that's a really nice key there. <clears throat> really happy about that pickup. Moving on, we have Iron Man and Submariner number one. Like I said, pretty much everything here is wall books. Get ready for this one. Iron Man number one. Pretty sure that's like a $600 book right there. So that's awesome. Iron Man 13 is the second appearance of the controller. We've got um, 12, which is the first appearance of the controller. 11, this is the Mandarin cover I was talking about earlier. I like the Hulk versus Mandarin and Iron Man versus Mandarin covers. Got another one here. <clears throat> Here's a classic, Iron Man versus Hulk. This is when I believe Hulk's just an android, though. It's like it's not the real dude. Uh, we've got number eight, Origin of Whitney Frost, later known as Madam Mask. I have number seven. And the last of the Iron Mans goes to number four. Bam. Not bad. I actually already have a full run of Iron Man, but it's really nice to get these very valuable early, early Iron Mans. Longer than a whale, he can swim anywhere. He can breathe underwater and go flying through the air. Looks like we're moving on now to Submariner. What goes with Submariner? Well, but a number one. Another very pricey book there. That's a good one. And actually the first time I've owned it. Um, and here's number two. First crossover by the Inhumans. If you can't afford number one, get number two. Here we go, number five. First appearance and origin of the Tiger Shark. First Diane Arliss and Dr. Dorcas. Um, number seven, just an iconic cover, Death of Destiny. Ooh, here's a good one. <laughs> oh man, wall books, nothing but wall books, baby. Submariner 8, iconic cover by John Buscema, classic Namor versus The Thing. It's also the fourth appearance of Vision, if anyone's counting. Number 9 is the Serpent Crown revealed as the Helmet of Power, and the first appearance of King Naga. We've got number 10, Origin of the Serpent Crown, first Carthon, tasked to find the Serpent Crown. Uh, number 11, really sharp looking cover there. Number 12, Origin of the Serpent Crown. And first appearance of Gargantos, who has actually appeared in Doctor Strange in that opening sequence of the second movie. Like I said, nothing but wall books. First Thor titled book, formerly Journey into Mystery, as you may or may not know, classic battle of Thor versus Hercules. Very nice book. Thor 129, first Ares, Hermes, Hera, Dionysus, Artemis, Hephaestus, Horkin, and Tana Nile. Literally so many appearances in that one. Uh, Thor 130. I'm going to say it right now. Be ready. I'm doing a claim sale on Sunday. Bring your wallets for this one. We're not doing the five ten dollars books. We're doing all the big boy keys. So if you've got some money... Don't go anywhere else but here on this channel live on Sunday. First appearance of Lady Sif. First appearance of the Lurking Unknown. Just a classic Kirby. Issue 141. We know he likes using his perspective and his angles. 144. 148 is the first appearance of the Wrecker and origin of Black Bolt. Unfortunately, that book's gone down quite a bit. Um, people were not unbelievably impressed with the Wrecking Crew from She-Hulk. 
Uh, Thor 149 is the origin of Black Bolt and the Inhumans. And just a couple left here, but they're bangers. This is my favorite cover from the Thor run. It's the origin of the Inhumans, origin of Triton, but it's also mainly the first cover appearance of Hela. Another great classic Thor cover here, first appearance of Mangog. And we're going to end it with a bang. First appearance of Adam Warlock, him. That is a really, 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 really nice book, and also one that is the first time I've owned it. Let's move on to the second box, which has even bigger things. Okay, we are now on to the second box, which means we are beginning our ASM. We've got annual number four. It's the third appearance of Mysterio in costume. We've got, look at this, ASM number six. It is coverless. He had a separate pile, not from the same collection, of coverless issues. This is the first appearance and origin of the lizard. That is a very, very expensive book. What does it do when it's coverless? Not entirely sure. We've got ASM 17. That is the second appearance of the green goblin. You'll see these uh, coverless ones sprinkled in. We've got ASM 32. We've got ASM 35. It's the second appearance of the Molten Man. Getting into some expensive books here. We've got the first appearance of Norman Osborn. That is right. We've got, I think this is issue 40, Origin of Green Goblin. Unfortunately, that is one of the colorless ones. We've got, you know, casual first appearance of Rhino. Here's the first full appearance of Mary Jane, second Rhino, and this is the classic Face It Tiger. You just hit the jackpot. That's where that's from. All right. Next is uh, third appearance of Rhino, second appearance of Mary Jane, Peter and MJ's first date. It's issue 43. Next is 44, which is the second Kurt Connors as the Lizard. These are expensive books here. ASM 45, 47, John Romita Sr. iconic cover. Well, you have to use your imagination, I guess, because it's not on there. Here's a big boy. First appearance of Kingpin, Wilson Fisk. ASM 50. Absolutely gorgeous book. That's a nice little payday back in my pocket for that one. What goes nicely with it, but 51, the first cover appearance of Kingpin. Uh, first Robbie Robinson, first Robert, first Robbie Robertson. Uh, we have ASM forty nine, ASM fifty four. Uh, this is amazing. Look at this. Here's a valuable book, right? ASM fifty five, valuable book, over a hundred bucks, right? Okay. Well, I got three of them. <laughs> oh, man. This collection, man. This was a good one. Um, ASM 56. First appearance of Captain Stacy. Coverless. ASM 57. First meeting of Spider-Man and Kazar. ASM 59. First cover of MJ. Unfortunately, it is coverless. First kiss between Gwen and Peter, and first appearance of the Brainwasher. 61 is the first cover appearance of Gwen Stacy. Let's put that back there. Let's see. A, uh, 63, I don't think there's key significance there. 64. We're coming up on my favorite Mysterio covers. Yeah, here we go. 65. Here we go. 66. I love that cover, but I love this one even more for some reason. 67. It really conveys what Mysterio is all about, I think. We've got 70. I think we're coming to an end here soon. 71. 72. 
two. Uh, and 90, I believe, is the last one from this pickup. Not bad. A nice uh, few inches high stack of ASM from the Silver Age. And there were some real nice values in there, for sure. Next up, we've got Tales to Astonish 81. First appearance of Boomerang. 84 is not a key. Here's a big one, 93, classic cover by Marie Steven, classic battle between Hulk and Silver Surfer. Very, very desirable book. Also, I don't think I've owned that before. Uh, 99 is the first full appearance of Lord Seth, uh, ally to Namor. 100 is another classic, expensive one here. Classic battle of Hulk and Namor. I like how I'm just flipping through like 100 to 200 to 300 dollar books in like a matter of five seconds. It's amazing. 101 is the first appearance of Destiny, introduction of the Serpent Crown, introduction of the Serpent Crown, and the final issue of the run. Next up looks like we're getting into, I think, Doctor Strange, uh, Strange Tales. Strange Tales, issue 130. Unfortunately, this is not mid-grade. It's a little lower. First, Kaecilius. Third appearance of Dormammu. And a parody of The Beatles. Here's another big one. 135, same thing. Very low grade here. It's like a 2-0. Uh, first appearance of S.H.I.E.L.D. First appearance of Hydra. And Nick Fury becoming an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. 150... Back to the nicer condition. First, Umar, Dormammu's sister. First time the Doctor Strange name appears in the banner and artwork. First artwork by John Buscema with Marvel. That's pretty cool. Strange Tales 159 is the first Contessa, Ale Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. First Gaffer, first Jacob Fury, brother to Nick Fury. Then we've got 165. I like how that one's not a key. It's literally more frequent that the books I pick up are actual keys in this run. 168 is the final issue. Well, some other key significance, I just can't remember, but that's the final Strange Adventures. Ready for this one? What comes after Strange Adventures? 168. Doctor Strange, but they didn't list it as number one. They kept it as 169. That's, that's a big book right there. Doctor Strange first run right there. 179 is a reprint actually of ASM Annual 2, which is when Doctor Strange and Spidey meet for the first time. Fun fact. Avengers! Assemble. I have an Avengers Annual number one, which is the first team up of the original and the new Avengers. We are now into the Avengers keys. And there's some nice ones in here. We've got issue 26. We've got issue 34, first appearance of the living laser. Uh, I think this was one of the coverless. Yep, 36. 39. Oh, bing bing. First appearance of the Red Guardian. Very, very nice. I'm kind of digging the condition on that too. All right, 44 is the origin of Black Widow, origin and death of Natasha's husband, uh, who is Red Guardian. 45 is when Hercules joins the Avengers. 46 is the first appearance of Whirlwind. Here we go. 47, first appearance of Dane Whitman. And what goes really nicely with a multi-hundred dollar book like that? Another multi-hundred dollar book. This one's 48, Origin of the Black Knight, Dane Whitman, first Aragorn, Winged Steel. Next up is issue 49, which is a really cool one. It's the first appearance of Typhon, but it's also Scarlet and Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver quitting. 
and Magneto proposes an all-mutant nation to the UN. Pretty classic stuff right there. Uh, 50 is the first cameo of Apollo in a mainstream Marvel continuity. 51 or 52 is a book that just exploded. First appearance with Grim Reaper and Black Panther joins Avengers. I'm thinking I picked that up at a good time. First crossover of X-Men in Avengers. Very nice. <clears throat> Expensive books here, man. Uh, 56 is the origin of Captain America retold. Bing, bing, 57, first appearance of Vision. And I think it's like the second appearance of Ultron, I believe. Oh man, that's a good one. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, 59, Hank Pym becomes Yellow Jacket. It's the third appearance of Vision. 60 is the marriage of Janet Van Dyne and Hank Pym and the first crossover of Doctor Strange in Avengers. 61, I don't believe is a key, but that's okay. And then, boom, 62, first appearance of Umbaku, and I think a couple other things going on in there. That's a nice one. Just a few from Tales of Suspense, uh, 87, 89, 93 is the first cameo of Modoc. Voice only, but he is mentioned by name. Uh, 98 is the classic Cap versus Black Panther. First full appearance of Whitney Frost, uh, known as Madam Mask. And with that cover, I thought that was a good transition to get into Captain America. Captain America 116. 117 wasn't in there, unfortunately. 115 was, though, iconic cover by Mary Severin. Final 12 cent issue. Very nice. Iconic Jim Stranko cover of 111. Here's a nice one. First appearance of Madam Hydra. First Rick Jones as Bucky. 109 is another classic cover. And, um, uh, retelling issue and again i am flipping through like 200 dollar plus books quickly um this this collection had some real meat here 104 another 104 102 101 you know what goes well with a 101 red skull cover how about one that's right, Captain America 100, The Return Issue. That is a killer good one to have, and uh, really happy about that. And we still have one more box to go. Yeah, guys, to, to say that I am digging this collection is an understatement. One of the best things about it, too, is like I didn't buy 20, 30, 40 long boxes, so I don't have to sit and mill through each box you know, doing hundreds of hours of man hours trying to find the good books. It was literally just a box of basically wall books. So I really appreciated it. He threw out an offer and it was surprisingly close to what I was going to offer for it. So we just did very minimal haggling, came on a, a really good price. I'm not going to share it today, but uh, came on a really good price. I am excited for this Sunday's claim sale, man. I'll tell you that. All right. Here's a couple odds and ends. Some of this was just randomly tossed in. First cover appearance of Jubilee. Uh, first appearance of Gambit. And that actually might be a potential candidate for a 9-8. Uh, first appearance of Banshee. Okay. Very nice. I'm obsessed with this cover. I love alien and robot covers, so this Tales of the Unexpected is absolutely up my alley. Let's get into some gorgeous DC keys, shall we? Mystery in Space 87, first appearance of IQ. Nice little dollar value on that one. Here we go, book I've never owned, House of Mystery 160. First appearance of Plastic Man in the Silver Age. Bam! 
All right, we've got Doctor Strange. Why did I just say Doctor Strange? Strange Adventure, big difference. Issue 215. First appearance of Sensai, um, he's part of the League of Assassins, and first appearance of Hook, who is actually the dude who killed Boston Brand, dead man. Very nice. Peacemaker, Charlton Comics, not number one, but number five. Remember, there's only five issues. One, two, three, four, five. That is the last issue. Got a nice little price tag on that. This was the most value-less book in the entire batch. Showcase 52. If that's the worst, that's pretty good. We got several copies of Shazam number one. Two of them were near minty. Uh, one of them was like very fine and the other one was fine. Can't remember. Uh oh, I'm missing one. I don't know. Okay, uh, then we got four copies of Sandman number one. I think three were very fine, and one was, like, fine. Bam. Bam. Thank you, ma'am. All right, and then this is a weird book, because it's not technically a key. I mean, it is an issue number one, and it is Bronze Age goodness. Um, but because of how freaking high grade it is, I might submit every last one of these shadow Number ones, it's a 1973 book. They were absolutely gorgeous, and that it's, it's making me think about it for sure. All right, next up is Ghost Rider number seven. That's not the Ghost Rider you're thinking of, that's the Western 60s Marvel Ghost Rider. What you might be thinking of, though, when I mention that Ghost Rider, is number two. Second appearance, and then bam, first appearance. That's another multi-hundred dollar book right there. Very nice. Strange Adventures, number 190. It's the first appearance of Animal Man in costume. Yes. Then we have a big one. Unfortunately, the condition is lower. Uh, first appearance and origin of Claw. This is Fantastic Four, 53. Second appearance of Black Panther. First mention of Vibranium, first appearance of T'Chaka, which is uh, T'Challa's father. And what's gonna go nicely with that? But FF52. Uh, that is the first appearance of the Black Panther. Unfortunately, it is coverless, but that just means that that is a nice affordable copy for someone. Really happy about that. Let's keep it going. Watch me just casually scroll past the first appearance of Black Panther. It's amazing. Silver Surfer, number one. Gorgeous cover right there. Absolutely killer. Gorgeous book. Then we've got Marvel. By the way, I kind of glossed over that, but I, just because I'm spending a short amount of time on these books is not an understatement. That is a big deal. Marvel Superheroes featuring Captain Marvel, number 13. First appearance of Carol Danvers. Another nice one. Detective Comics, uh, 362. Uh, Detective Comics, 371. Debut of the TV-style Batmobile and a slightly controversial cover. What goes well with that? Oh, why the first appearance of Batgirl? That is Barbara Gordon, man. First appearance of Batgirl. Again, that's like a $400 book that I just spent six seconds on. Batman 156, iconic cover that would be homaged throughout the decades. You still see this to this day. Classic cover, classic story. When Batman is guilt-ridden over not being able to save Robin. This is the third appearance of Batgirl, world's finest book. Detective Comics Early, early 60s. This might be like 1960. 320. Uh, we've got Detective 365. Another kind of classic cover. Um, classic Batgirl and Catwoman cover. That's issue, what, 197? Yeah, 197. It is not an upgrade to the one I have. I have like a 9.4 of that. I gotta get it graded. Oh my god. 
This was one of the coverless. Batman 189, first appearance of Scarecrow in the Silver Age. First time he also uses chemicals to elicit fear, which is the Scarecrow we know. Here's the thing, it's coverless. Um, it's a really valuable book, but what is it when it's coverless? A lot less. Batman 164 in Mylar. <laughs> Oh, I love this collection. Uh, Wonder Woman 141. Wonder Woman 142. 151 is the first solo story of Wonder Woman as Wonder Girl and first appearance of the Glop. Wonder Woman 159. I included this in my ugliest covers of the Silver Age video. Origin of Wonder Woman retold. Classic ugly looking cover. Too many word bubbles, she's off in the corner, very awkward. Here's another goofy cover, 169, Fighting the Centipede. Here's a versus, looks like Gorilla Grodd. I think it's Gorilla Grodd. Wonder Woman versus Gorilla Grodd, or at least it could have been a gorilla. They had so many gorillas back then, 170. Ding, 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 here's a big one, 160. It's the first Silver Age appearance of Cheetah and the first appearance of the new Dr. Psycho. We are just getting the books, man. <laughs> oh, man. Flash, 139, first appearance of Reverse Flash. Ooh. And unfortunately, there's a chunk taken out of that top corner, but Whatever. It's the first reverse flash. It's fine. Ironically, the book would have been in not bad shape otherwise. This is the second worst book in the whole lot. A random Hawkman issue. Again, if that's your biggest bad book, you got a great thing going on. First appearance of Beast Boy. This one key after another, baby. Oh, my God. Woo. Okay, second appearance of Teen Titans. Second appearance of Wonder Girl. If you can't afford the first appearance, that's the book you get. Teen Titans number one. Oh man, debut issue right there. And then I do have number six, which is the first meeting of Beast Boy and the Teen Titans. Did I mention everything's going to be sale? This claim sale on Sunday. Normally I actually do like five, ten, twenty dollar books. We're doing books from like literally twenty dollars up to into the thousands. So bring some money. Um, this is gonna be a bigger one than I normally do. First appearance of Goldface, we're now into the Green Lantern. Um, I think it's the first cover appearance of Pie Face, is that his name? I don't know, some really racist Green Lantern character, which I love Green Lantern. I don't know why I'm blanking on that name. Uh, 53. First appearance of the Black Hand, Green Lantern 29. That's a really good one right there. Green Lantern 40, but it's coverless. First appearance of Krona, Origin of Infinite Earths, Origin of the Guardians. First Silver Age versus the Golden Age Green Lanterns. That is a huge book, and now you've got one that you can really afford. JLA 53. JLA 56, classic JSA versus JLA. Uh, then we've got a 55. First Golden Age Robin in the Silver Age. And now I have two of these suckers, and I actually think I underpriced this. First appearance of Zatara in the Silver Age. First appearance of Alora, Mistress of the Dark Elements. Let's keep it going. This was a weird pickup, too, because I'm used to, like, when you look through a short box, you find, like, the 10 keys if they're there. This was tricky because 90% of them were keys, so I had to look up every book individually. I had to put it all in new Mylar, and it was a, a beautiful thing. First appearance of Mr. Terrific in the Silver Age. Now we're getting into some 10 cent Superman. Well, not some. This is the only one. 1954 right there. Not bad. Here we go. First appearance of Dark Side. Yes, sir. 
Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen, 134. It's been a, a book I've been after for a while, and I'm actually really glad I didn't pull the trigger on it, because now I got one. This is a book I am constantly finding. I don't know why, it's rare, it's valuable, but somehow I keep finding it. Stranko's Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. number one. This time I got a couple of the stragglers with it, like issue six, which is an iconic cover, and issue seven, which is an iconic cover, um, which was inspired by Dolly. Now we're moving on to a little bit of Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel is an interesting book because really the only keys is that number one. So luckily, I able. Luckily, I got two of them. Not bad. And then we've got a full run. All right, so we got two through. Oh, there's a big one. Two through eleven of Captain Marvel right here. In I think the only one that's a key is eight. First appearance of Cyberx right there. So that's nice. I'm probably going to move that as a lot of Captain Marvel lot right there. We're going to end the video with some Daredevil. What do you say? Now the first three books I'm about to show you from this Daredevil run are beat. I My hypothesis is he got them somewhere else because they just don't match. We got Daredevil number two. The first Excuse me. The second appearance of Electro, but also the second appearance of Daredevil. Unfortunately, that copy is not that cute. Same thing with this Daredevil number five. This ain't that cute a copy of the redesign of the DD on his chest and first appearance of the Matador. We've also got a classic cover here, number nine. Same thing, not that cute. Now they get into a better shape. For whatever reason, those ones were pretty rough. Uh, we've got the first appearance of the Plunderer. Daredevil 15. Nice Mylar. Uh, Daredevil 18 is the first appearance and origin of the Gladiator. 28. 32. We've got some awesome Doom covers coming up. Let's find them. 33. 36. Always nice picking up Silver Age in bulk. 37 classic fight of Doctor Doom versus Daredevil cover. And I actually prefer this cover a little bit more, which is interesting because this one had more value. Um, this one's... I put price them actually about the same. This one that I like more is less valuable, but it's better grade. Um, I love that cover, man. Uh, Daredevil 45. We are coming to a close. 46. 47. 49, first appearance of Star Saxon, later becomes Mr. Fear. And we're going to end it with 50. I don't know about you guys, but I think I did pretty good. And no, I'm not mentioning how much I paid on this one, but that's okay. You can use your imagination when I say I know that I did well. Really well, even. So I'm really happy about this. I had to put not honestly that much time into it either. And I've got some really good stuff. Will I be slabbing any of this? I don't know. Um, I've already read a decent amount of it. I've never read Namor the Submariner before, so I stuck my nose in those, and they were a lot of fun. Uh, I was getting into a little bit of the Thor. I was basically reading the stuff I never read, because as you guys might know, I'm more of a DC guy than a Marvel guy. Um, this was a blast. Absolute killer pickup. I can't wait for what is to come for more, but... Watch out this Sunday, man, because this all is going to be sold. I'm not keeping anything. It's all going. So be ready, and I'll see you at the next video. Keep on hunting. <laughs> <laughs>